Next up, Staten Island Express, Nissan Sentra, 2000 something, doesn't really matter, with a single cylinder misfire. Just so you guys know, it is a 2008. Okay, 1.8 liter. History of this car, it had some valve issues. The head was rebuilt, it had a problem with cylinder number four. The mechanic said, uh, redid the head, put in new spark plugs and new coils, and now it's misfiring in cylinder number one, and also new injectors. So let's jump in it and see how it runs. And I don't get this. It's a no crank. Something to do with the security system, but sorry, you pulled the code out of it. P zero three zero one, and it runs smooth, but then it gets like a da 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 da, you know. A pretty consistent fish bite. If you put it in gear, very uh, almost a dead miss. But sometimes it comes back. So right off the bat, from the symptoms, I'm saying I'm just going to take a guess. It's a cracked spark plug on cylinder number one. Just because. Sometimes the spark jumps and it's fine, but other times it's jumping somewhere else. So let's get the spark plug out and I don't know, swap it over with another cylinder or something. The only part that sucks is this plastic intake manifold is covering everything. Injectors, spark plugs, there's no reason for this Nissan. Why <laughs> would you do this? So let's get this like lift it up a little bit, take this number one coil out, take the spark plug out and see what happens. So before we jump the gun here, let's just use our paddle probe to do a quick check of a known good to a known bad. So that's a good pattern on cylinder number four. So I'll stay there. Yeah, if you can just hold it like that or something. We're just trying to get. So you can see, I always confuse the spark line and the burn line. That's the burn line. It's about a millisecond. And there's a spark line. So we can save that capture just for reference later. Record. That's cylinder number four. Let's just do cylinder number three. For uh, yeah, you can get on there. So roughly the same, about a millisecond. So all we're looking for is a nice, you know, that's when the spark is triggered, and then we have some kind of burn line. Again, the paddle probe won't give you ideal waveforms, but in Let's see if I can get a little bit better on there for you. In terms of comparing known good to known bad, yeah, that's that, that was pretty good. Yep. Okay, so let's go to number one. And there's what a bad spark looks like. So definitely ignition problem. I'm, st I'm sticking to my cracked spark plug theory, Keith. I've seen this before, this hash. Sounds good to me. So we have to take this manifold off. So at least we did the test, and we're sure we're not going to waste time doing this. So what we're going to do here, the strategy is swap both the spark plugs and the coils around. Now here's the original plug. I wiped it off looking for cracks or carbon tracking. It doesn't look like there's anything on the surface. Maybe a little bit right there. I don't know. But definitely no cracks visible. And then the coils, uh, two of them were replaced. Number one and number three are like no name brand. And then number 
two and four are original. Looks like, I don't know, Bosch, made in Germany. Has a Nissan logo on it, so those are original. So we're gonna put the original coil on here and swap the plugs around. And if the misfire moves, then okay. <laughs> uh, change the coil and the plug. All right, so the bad pattern did move with the coil and the plug. There's the, oh, it's tough. there he is. There, it's really hard to get the pedal probe with number two. If we were thinking, we should have swapped with number four because that's easily accessible. However, we weren't thinking. That's bad, and then we go to number one, which used to misfire. Now that's good. We can always plug in a scanner and see if the code moved to number two, 302, instead of 301. But that's the diagnosis. Needs an OEM ignition coil and an NGK spark plug. No auto lights in Nissan. <laughs> All right, just a little more bonus footage just for people who don't believe the paddle probe. Our misfire did move to cylinder number two based on the scanner. We just have to put the car in gear, get it to misfire, it'll set the code. Boom, confirmation. A little bonus footage. So Keith here is. Did, did you fix it? Did you find a problem? We, we found the problem. Yeah, it needs oh. a coil and a plug. Oh, we're, no, we're not going to split hairs any further. Because our buddy Sal here, he, he got us something. If we actually figured it so, out. So Sal here, oh. he's a fireman, and he makes the best chicken soup that I've ever oh had in my life. He makes the best of everything. But wait, are these homemade? What are these again? White chocolate cheese peppermint cheesecake. White chocolate peppermint cheesecake cupcakes. <gasps> Wait, homemade or bought? No, nah, from Georgetown Cupcakes. Okay, so this is New York City stuff, so you, it's it's, you, it's you really good. You can't imagine the weight. Keith, I got some hot tea in the in the thermos here, so we're going to have some tea time, and then move on to more cars. <laughs> but <awesome>. bonus footage. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a quick follow up on the Nissan Sentra misfire uh, diagnosis. It wasn't really a case study, it was pretty quick. Uh, indeed, it was the spark plug. Surprisingly, you know, when we took it out visually, it looked clean, everything looked fine, but uh, the mechanic he said first he replaced the coil because we moved both the coil and the spark plug to another cylinder, and the problem remained. Then he replaced the spark plug, the problem went away. So that gut feeling uh, amazingly hit the nail on the head. But we still needed to verify the, uh, the problem with the paddle probe because in this case, that silly plastic intake manifold was covering everything. So before taking everything apart and moving stuff around, it was nice to just get the paddle probe on those coils and see, you know, compare apples to apples what a known good looks like versus the one that was misfiring. You know, nailed it. That was the perfect tool for the job. So if you want it to be 100%, you do need the scope and that uh, ignition probe to you know, do that simple check. Um, on that note, I wanted to show you guys the Amazon store I set up. It's online, it's fully operational. There's a link on the homepage from the YouTube channel. So here's what it looks like. And I spent some time and actually organized the, uh, the equipment into categories. So we have eight categories, emergency car equipment, scanners. If you open it up, you can see all the items in there. And electrical testing, that's scopes, amp clamps, Electrical repair, my favorite solder, soldering iron, um, also mobile equipment, and then mechanical repair, shop stuff, there's the favorite headlight, and WD-40, of course. Finally, visual and sound testing and fluids testing. So all the items in here I either have on board in my mobile diagnostic kit or I have used in the past and uh, really tested them out so anything I put in here is going to be recommended <laughs> you know first-hand experience um, or if the item was discontinued you know my favorite item I found the next best thing something that has really good reviews on it so 
if you want to go shopping and have quick links to items that are already you know tested and reviewed go there because if you just go to Amazon and type stuff in about 90% of the stuff is gonna be kinda junky <laughs> you know you're gonna have to sift through reviews and all that stuff so I did the uh, legwork for you guys so check out the Amazon store and anytime I use something and it's on there I'll just you know obviously mention it so you can get it easily and make your diagnostics that much easier and more efficient but uh, stay tuned for more of the Staten Island Express and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.